Hi, this is Robin Thomas of Living Well Connections, and I am so thrilled to have Aditi Verma on today. We're going to get to learn a little bit about Aditi and what, her, what she loves about um, her own business and how she helps people. Um, welcome, Aditi. It's nice to see you. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. To be yeah, here. this is so much fun. We're going to have so much fun with this. This is going yes. to be great. Uh, yes. I'm, I'll give a little intro for you. Aditi, she, Aditi Verma, Verma is a mom. That's, that's the most important. <laughs> and a writer <laughs> and a certified wisdom coach for kids ages 7 to 12 and certified teen wisdom coach for teens and youths age 13 to 23. She believes it's vital for children to be balanced emotionally and intellectually to achieve their goals and to be successful in their life. With Empower and Help, Aditi hopes to bring that balance into child's, children's lives by focusing on emotional intelligence and value-based learning. She also believes that personal growth within parents will naturally lead to personal growth in children. And so she provides support and workshops for parents. Her vision is that of a connected, empowered, and happy family for all her clients. She teaches powerful tools to her clients to achieve their goals, which she herself practices as well. And again, a huge welcome, Aditi. We're happy to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you for the wonderful introduction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I can't wait to hear more about you and what you're doing. Because I know we've met through holistic health community. And I know you're really passionate about holistic health for people of all ages. But I'd like to know, I'd like you to go into when and how did you get interested in becoming a certified wisdom coach for kids, teens and young adults? Mm. It all started with my son. So I have two kids. My son is the older one and my daughter is the younger one. And he went through a huge transition. We moved from New Jersey to Virginia and then from Virginia to North Carolina in two years time frame. And when we moved to North Carolina, um, he was only five years old. And I always thought he was a very friendly kid. But all of a sudden, you know, when he would say hi to people, he would just say hi that you couldn't even hear. It was a whisper. You know, you couldn't even hear him. And then he would assume that they didn't see him or didn't want to play with him. And I was like, but you didn't say hi loud enough. And he's like, no, I did. And I could sense that he was going through some change within him. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's affecting his confidence. And I desperately wanted to help him. I wanted my boy to be that kid who would, go out and play without holding himself back. And I started looking for programs that would help kids. Um, and I came across this wonderful certification, Adventure in Wisdom Coaching Program. And I got certified just to help my son. And I use the stories. It's, it's, you teach kids 27 different life skills through stories, which was wonderful. I was so excited. I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to read the story to him. And it was working so well. He was enjoying it and he was learning these things. However, one thing I noticed for these skills to be more powerful, um, you have to create an environment around the children. Um, my son and a lot of kids are very influ influential. You know, they have a huge peer influence. So if they're in a group where they are thinking and they're peers are thinking the same thing, that skill set becomes so much more powerful and it's influential and they really absorb that. And it was at that time I decided that I need to not only teach this to my son, I need to take this out and teach other kids. And that's when I started offering group classes. And after that, it was just amazing because what it was doing for the children and the feedback that I was getting from parents, it was as if I found my calling, you know, it, it just oh, felt great. the right thing. That's great. You, you provided a wonderful environment for all of them. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And it helps me too, because when I'm losing my cool, I use these skills. It's not very different. <laughs> it's not very I different think, for I adults think versus children. I think we all need to learn some of these tools. Right? <laughs> We've done it. So, so when you have clients, you said, you mentioned you have workshops. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what is the, how do you work with your clients? Is it only in workshops or you do individually? 
Um, yes, I actually do both group workshops, which are year round workshops. They are five week long, six week long, 12 week long, depending on the topic. Um, I work with them on one on one basis. You know, so parents are struggling with their child, they're concerned about something, they give me a call. It's free. I talk to them as a discovery call. I understand their pain points and concerns, and then I will recommend you know different what what is the coaching package that would work for their child because there are 27 different life skills and depending on the challenges a child has they don't need all those 27 right. we focus on what they need help with um, I also do summer camps and I love them because um, it's you know uh, whether it's workshop or summer camps it's always about having fun for me and giving that fun environment for the children because they will forget what I say to them but they will not forget how I make them feel Exactly. You know, so I do summer camps and even workshops. We do stories, we do games, we do artwork. It's all hand on experiential learning. And uh, those are the three main ways. I also um, do speaking engagements um, and I come to schools, preschools. I work with other camps, um, come in and do sessions for kids. And I also do workshop for parents because, you know, I can work with parents I can work with a child once a week, but as a parent, you are with the child most amount of time. So if a child is doing their growth, the parent also need to be at the same level or higher level. Right. And so only then you'll be able to understand and help your child. And help so reinforce, help reinforce that. Because it's as we develop habits of these. Yeah. Things, yeah. I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, I was doing the self uh, esteem assessment for a child and one of the questions I asked him that I had he had to rate from one being disagreeing completely and 10 being agreeing completely and I said okay I deserve to be happy and he gave himself a rating of six and I said why six and why not 10 I mean you deserve to be happy and he said yeah but I'm fine I'm happy some other kids can be happy too and I'm saying that's lovely and it's sweet that you want other kids to be happy. But you see, it's not like taking away from you to giving them happy. You can be happy and you deserve to be happy and they deserve to be happy. This should be 10 and that should be 10. For that to be 10, you don't have to make this six. It shouldn't work like that because that's a scarcity mindset. You don't want to work right. like that. And so when I was telling him that, of course, um, you know, First time, it's taking a little bit of time to absorb that concept. And I tried to teach that in many different ways. But then I also talked to the parent and I was telling the same thing to the parent. And I realized that even parent had to learn that mindset. Right, right. The parent doesn't let me. There's so, like, oh, many, so, so many parents out there with a scarcity mindset. Yeah. And she, I, I, as a, when I was talking to her, I realized that she herself learned this concept for the very first time. You know, right. and if, if a parent doesn't know it, you can't teach this to your child. No, and, no. And, 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 so, you show them, and, you know, parents show their kids in so many ways. If you're not teaching, talking to them, they see how you act. Yeah. They see how you handle situations. Oh, so, yeah. That's right. That's, That's right. Great. So I absolutely, I, you know, my next question is tell you, tell us how you're able to help them. I, I could kind of see you could definitely help people. Do you have any... Without saying names or anything, is there um, like a general story or maybe put a couple of people together as one person? Have, have you seen growth in children? Um, and oh, even you know, I'll, I'll share my son's story. And that's like, I don't have to hide that at all. You know? <laughs> so um, as I said, I started this program for him. And um, then I saw how peer influence was so big. So I started offering summer camps. And in one of the summer camps, we were talking about uh, self-confidence and standing up for your peers you know the, the con we were actually the peer pressure was one of the topics that we were discussing and uh, he did like multiple weeks of summer camps with me because you know when I do it at home he also does it with me and <laughs> so in the neighborhood the kids were playing and this kid comes and tells my son that you know the other kid is being mean and he's bullying him or he's being mean to him and my son's response is like really Oh, I'm so sorry. You're my friend and he's your friend too. You know what? Next time he's mean to you, let me know. I will stand up for you. I will talk to him. <laughs> now, imagine, this was like my first summer camp. Imagine the son who went from just whispering high 
to mm-hmm. telling this guy that I will stand up for you. That's that was a huge thing for me. I was like, wow, this works. One other example was one of the girls did my summer camp and I actually send home wisdom for home to the parents because I don't want it to end with me. I wanted some things for parents to continue this discussion at home. And parents who actually do that, they see the difference. And these parents did that and they sent me an email saying, this program is so wonderful. We were going through the sheet that you sent home with our daughter and she realized that the bully that at school that she thought was bully wasn't really a bully. Uh, That's a deep realization, right? That's like putting yourself in bully's shoes and realizing why this mm-hmm. kid is behaving that way. Yeah, truly, truly empathizing. With- yes, and that was, I was amazed. I was like, thank you so much. I need to hear some of these things, how, you know, that helps me and that keeps me going. Yeah. Um, so these are That's the two good. examples. I bet, and, and I said, it's, it, it sort of leads into, what is your favorite part about working with these children and working with these parents. <laughs> I, I honestly, I love um, when they get learn the skill sets and there is an aha moment, you know, and every child is a different level. Not every child is able to grasp it right away and turn it around. It takes time for some kids and for some kids, they have used it for themselves and they have taught their friends how to use it. And, oh, that's great. And that that's I am just great. like, and when they come and share with me, yeah, it's starting amazing. a movement. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, wow, I'm one of the teens. Um, we were talking about affirmations and how you should use them, right? And you would think teens can be rebellious. They will listen, but they don't always really want to practice it. And you never know what's happening because they are listening. They are listening, even mm-hmm. though they behave or you may not say that they want to practice it. Because when I had a conversation, this, uh, this teen said, you know, this girl in school, uh, she was going through a tough time and she was really upset. And she was like, I feel this way, this way. And I told her to try these affirmations. And I was like, wow, you told her to try these affirmations. Did she try them? And he goes, yeah, actually she tried them. And next day she came back to me and she told me that they really work. Thank you. Wow. And those are the aha moments. Like when they get it and then they take that step forward, uh, that's where I feel like this is worth it. This is amazing. This is helping not only the kids, but it's helping the family. You know, uh, it's helping others. Uh, and yeah, and I love. I, I also love how you you work with the older children and you work with the youth and the young adults. But you're working a lot with the younger ones. Yeah. Who most of you know most of the time you like, oh well, they're just okay. They're you know they're kids. They don't uh-huh. have any problems. They're kids. But you know, they get these quiet, deep-seated beliefs in themselves. You, you and, can, when they, and then when they hit enter middle school or high yeah. school, those things come out in waves. They're, they're growing into a small mm-hmm. plant. I mean, my daughter is five years old, and I feel like I haven't taught her, you know, like, I feel like she, I haven't read her the stories because at least, you know, seven years old. And if maybe I'm reading it to my son, she has heard it. Maybe she has picked something. It's like a boeing a seed. I was making my vision board and there was this picture I cut out which said, normal is boring. And I was like, I'm not gonna put it on. And she goes, you need to put it on, you need to put it on. And I'm like, why do I need to put it on? I'm making my vision board. She's like, mommy, you need to put it on because that means you're going to have an adventure. Oh, She's five years old. And I looked at her, I'm like, I love it. Who are you? I love it. You never know when that sinks in and mm-hmm. when, how they're absorbing and what's the interpretation they're making. And so I put it on on my vision board. Awesome. <laughs> I am going to have an adventure. You're going to have an adventure and she's going to have an adventure right there with you. Yes. So have it, you had her, have you had your children do vision boards yet? I have. They have made it. They're very simple, but um, that's a start. That's it's okay. Easy. That's okay. That's totally okay. I mean, just so, the... Just that knowledge that you can look forward to the future. I mean, you can look yeah. forward to things happening, exciting things happening. Yeah. 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 So they have made it. We have kept it. Um, you know, we did it together. They did it before me. Theirs was simpler. And then I did mine later. But yeah, they have done it. It's wonderful. And, and you know, um, and you don't know how kids are absorbing. Even if your kids, you feel like your kids don't need it, this is going to benefit them. You have no idea how they will benefit, how this will benefit them. You're boiling a seed, and you don't know when you will see the results. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. They can, you know, get that deep inside their heart and and pull it out when they need it, and you know, pull it out in like everyday life. Have it a have a like it's one of the healthy habits. 
Yes, yes, it. absolutely. So how do my, our listeners reach you? Because I know you, will you live in, do you live in Morrisville or Cary? I live in West Cary. West Cary. Close to Morrisville. Close to Morrisville. Yeah. So right on that line. Yeah. yeah but so, so probably most likely you're, you work with kids um, face-to-face, I'm assuming. Yes. Um, I work with kids face-to-face. We actually do online classes as well. And I do online uh, okay. sessions as well. But if they are local, like Morrisville, Car- West Cary, Cary, or even Apex, I will try to meet them. And yeah. uh, I would like to do it in person. Uh, yeah, I understand that. Yeah. 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 And, and to reach me, you can go to my website, www.empowerandhelp.com. There is a, all the ways to reach me over there. You can send me an email, aditi at empowerandhelp.com. Or call me, 215-840-5366. Perfect. And I will actually, I'll post those with a video so people don't have to use the, only use their ears. They can use their eyes too and be able to click right over and get to know you, you know, reach out for you because you're such a delight and oh, you're such you. a resource for families in this area. I'm thrilled thrilled that you're out there doing it. Like I said, you're starting a movement of, we need resilience. We need, um, we need kindness. We need, I mean, we can't ever use more kindness. <laughs> you know, we just, yeah. Always, yeah. we always just, need that. When you're giving kindness, you're kind of included in it, right? It's like Absolutely. being kind to yourself and you feel happier. Though. It's like the happy, it's like the boy with the happiness um, because it multiplies. If you're happy, you help make other people happy at the same time. Yeah, I, I, and I said, like, imagine your glass, right? If it is half empty, it's going to be harder to give happiness. So imagine it being full. Mm-hmm. Your glass can be full, and their glass can be full too. Yeah. Like, if you are sad, are you going to be able to make others happy? He's like, no. If you're yeah. angry, what are you going to feel like doing? Yelling, hitting, going away, right? But if you're happy, what are you going to feel like doing? Being nice. Yeah, and playing. Hitting having fun and, and it's like a, it's like happiness is contagious. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I, thank you. Have, you know, I just, I just love you and, and what you're oh. doing. So um, thank you, Robin. Go oh. out there and, and help our children. <laughs> thank Take you care. so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.